Hey guys, this is Mike the Detroit Borg with a look at iPhoto for iOS. Now, this is compatible with the iPad 2, iPad 3, iPhone 4, and iPhone 4S. So all you iPod Touch users and iPad 1 users are out of luck. And of course, you do need iOS 5.1. So this is $4.99 in the App Store and is available today. So let's go ahead and launch it and take a look. So here we have our multiple views. So we have our albums here on this glass shelf. Uh, so here I have my edited, my camera roll, photos taken or saved to the iPad and photo stream. If we swipe, we can see photos, which is the photos that are on my iPad. Events, which are events essentially synced from my iPhoto library on my Mac and journals, which we'll take a look at a bit later. Now in the upper right hand corner, we have some of our options, including the ability to turn wireless beaming on and off, include photo location when sharing photos, using location lookup for the journal feature. So for example, if you want to add a map widget or weather widget, this will enable that or turn that off. So again, that helps a little bit in terms of location privacy. Now if we tap on any of these albums, we get our photo viewer. Here we have some other options. So for example, we can resize this column so we can choose whether we want one, two, or three rows. You can also move this around just by grabbing it. So if you want it on the left and right side, and that will change the controls to left hand or right hand. Now taking a look through our main editor, we have pretty familiar navigation options. Of course, you can swipe left and right to go through your library, or you can add more than one photo to your viewer. So all you have to do is tap and hold, and you'll add as many as you want. Another neat feature is the ability to find like photos. So for example, if I go back to my original photo that I was working with, all I have to do is double tap and it will add similar photos. So again, if we pick another photo, for example, this one here, double tap. So if you want to find the perfect shot, this gives you the option to look through them. Now, another great thing about this app is you have this little question mark icon up here, which will show you exactly what each function does. This works for everything you're doing, so no matter what you're doing, whether you're editing, viewing, etc., just bring that up. And in fact, you can work with it uh, while those flags are up. So this is a great way of tutoring yourself on how to use it. Now down below, we have some of our editing options, which we'll take a close look at, but we have our cropping, exposure, color, uh, brushes and effects. We also have auto enhance, which will automatically adjust the uh, photo for uh, what it determines are the best settings. We also have our rotation. We can mark and flag an item. We have several options here if we hold it. So we can flag all, unflag all, last 24 hours, last seven days, and we can choose a date range. We can also mark as a favorite, or we can hide a photo from the library so we don't have to look at it again. Now let's go ahead and start editing our photo. I'm just gonna hide our library so we get a full view of the picture and our editing tools. So first thing up is auto enhance. If we tap auto enhance, it will automatically adjust everything. And of course, if we don't want it, we can just press the undo button. But what I'm gonna show you here is that uh, that auto enhance feature has made a few changes to some of the settings and that's indicated with these sort of glowing icons above the settings. So here our exposure has been adjusted as well as our color. Now let's go ahead and undo that and you can see those changes disappear. Uh, and let's go ahead and start cropping it. Now there are a few options for cropping. One of the things it does is detect the horizon. This is great for landscape shots. Here it's detecting the top of the box of this image. So if you want to straighten it according to that, you can do so. All you have to do is tap that and it straightens it out perfectly. Another option here is to adjust manually. So you can just use the scroll wheel here and it will automatically select it and you do get a sound effect here or you can do so manually with your fingers. Now another option here is when you tap the level, you get the ability to use the gyroscope to level out your image. And I'm not sure why you would do this, but it's kind of a neat feature that takes advantage of some of the internal hardware of the iPad. Now once we're done with cropping, we can take a look at our exposure settings. So here you have a little slider here, which you can adjust. Uh, now if you don't know what this means, all you have to do is tap that question mark again and you can see your indicators. So this uh, level here is to adjust highlights. So you can adjust your highlights, basically dim the bright spots in your photo, or you can adjust shadows so you can lift up the shadows and see uh, more detail. Of course you can adjust contrast, brightness, and that sort of thing. Now you also have some touch screen options here. All I have to do is tap on the screen and you get this little slider here. So if you go up you can change your highlights. You go down, you can adjust them down. If you go side to side you can change your contrast down or up. Now another option you have with the undo button is to tap and hold it so you can undo or redo your last action. So you can undo the black level adjustment I just made or redo the contrast adjustment I just undid. So let's redo that. So you can see it, it goes back. 
and you can keep undoing it through the entire uh, actions you just did. Now onto our color settings here. Again, we have a similar interface. So we have our individual color settings here for saturation, blue sky, greenery, and skin tones. We also have our white balance settings here. So again, you can just use this as a slider so we can adjust our saturation. We can adjust the intensity of the blue sky or the greenery and the skin tone. Now another option here is to use the touch interface and it's smart enough to know what you intend to adjust based on where you're touching the photo. So for example, if we touch my hand here, tap and hold it, you can see I get the option to change my skin tone here. So that goes uh, sideways, left and right, you can see the slider moving. But if you tap another part of the photo, you can see it determines that I have uh, a blue sky here and allows me to adjust that. Same with greenery. Again, greenery left and right. And you always have the option to change saturation. So for example, right here, go up and down and that will change your saturation. Now we also have our white balance here. So we have several options. We can either stick with the original, uh, choose sunny, cloudy conditions, flash, shade, incandescent, fluorescent, face balance, and custom. And whatever you choose will uh, be indicated right here. So right now we're in our original uh, white balance, but if we go for sunny conditions, you can see it's now uh, set for sun. Or you can choose custom, which is a pretty neat option. So you get this little viewer here, which basically allows you to pick a specific point of the photo and will automatically adjust uh, white balance according to where you select it. Now we also have our gear icon here which allows us to do a few things. So for example if we like the color profile of this photo we can copy this color and apply it to another photo. Uh, and you can see we have this uh, paste option here or you can select uh, preserve skin tone so it will highlight these skin tones in my hand here and keep that from changing. Or if you don't like anything you just did, just hit reset color and it goes back to the original. Now next up are our brushes tools. And as you can see, we get this little user interface that tells us exactly what we have to work with. So we have repair, red eye, saturate, desaturate, light and dark and sharpen and soften and they work as advertised. So basically your finger becomes one of these brushes. So if we choose saturate, you can see we now have the ability to saturate my hand right here. So you can see it gets a little more colorful. And toward the bottom right, you can see we have some additional options here. So if we tap this, this will find our edges. So when we're using this brush tool, it will not affect the edges or the, the scene beyond the edge here. So beyond my hand, it won't continue to saturate the wall. Works pretty well. And you can also use the eraser to erase the effects you just did. So if you want to fine tune them, and if we go to the gear icon here, we have some additional options, including show strokes. So if you turn on show strokes, you can see that it turns red. And this just shows you exactly where you're coloring. And you can turn that on and off. You can also adjust the level of, or the intensity of the strokes you just made. So for example, if we scale that here, you can see it affects them. So it gets darker and lighter. And you can erase all strokes so you can basically undo everything you just did. Now every time you use one of these brushes tools you can see it starts glowing blue just to let you know that you've actually used it and the effect has been applied. So for example if we use this desaturation tool here you can see the scene gets a little lighter. Oops, we're going to have to turn the eraser off before that takes effect. So let's use desaturation here. You can see it gets a little more gray so we lose some of that green color. We also have our lightning tool here which is good for adjusting shadows here so the shadow gets a little lighter. So you get the idea. You can see all the effects have, have been applied and they're all glowing now. Now if you want to make other changes with these tools on the left, which are pretty neat. So we have our wand tool, or our, I'm sorry, our repair tool here. Uh, basically what happens is it suspends everything you just did or have been doing in order to uh, use the tool effectively. So if any of these are interfering with your ability to use this tool, it will automatically suspend them and lift them up and reapply them once you're done using the tool. So for example, if I want to erase this image here, I'll use the repair tool. So I'll just circle that and it'll automatically replace it basically with the background. So it works pretty neat. Now next up are the effects. Now this is basically a palette that swings out and you can cycle through them. So let's take a look to see exactly what we have here. So we have warm and cool, dual tone, black and white, aura, vintage and artistic. Now vintage is a lot like uh, Instagram. So basically you get some prepackaged effects here. So you even have vignettes so we can uh, change the vignette. We also have, uh, if you don't know exactly what each setting is or what each effect is, you can tap the question mark here and then we'll show us some of them. So again, early, early chrome, 60s, saturated film, neutral film, vivacious, muted, and vignette. And if you want to get back to your effects palette, just tap the corner, it swings back out again. So we have warm and cool, which is a sliding scale. So this adjusts the color temperature. We also have duo tone, which again is a pretty neat effect for changing uh, tint and color. 
Aura, which changes uh, intensity. And we also have black and white, which we almost missed here. Now black and white's pretty cool, so you can change the effect. You can also add vignette, add grain, add sepia. So add vignette, add grain, gets a little grainier, and add sepia. We also have artistic, which are some additional effects, including dark gradient, warm gradient, cool gradient, vignette, tilt shift, oil paint, and watercolor. So anytime you want to undo these, all you have to do is remove effect. You also have the option to copy the effect to apply it to another image. Now in the upper right hand corner, in addition to this sharing function, which we'll take a look at later, we also have info. So this will show us some of our EXIF data, such as what type of camera it was taken, when and where, our f-stops, our shutter speeds, our focal range, etc. We also have our show original button. So this is a non-destructive process. So anytime you're editing the photo and you want to see the original photo, all you have to do is tap that button and it'll take you right back to it. So you can see we can cycle back and forth. So anytime you start editing a photo, you're not affected the original you're just creating a new photo and that will be saved in the edited folder now once we're done editing our photo let's take a look at the sharing options now there are two here I want to take a close look at one of them is journal and the other one is beam but of course you can share via a variety of options including camera roll iTunes email you can print them out Twitter Flickr Facebook and slideshow but what I want to do right now is beam now beam will basically allow you to send this photo to another device or iOS device running the iPhoto app so right now I have my iPhone 4S here running the iPhoto app. We're going to choose the selected item. Of course, you can choose more than one. And we're going to, it, it sees our iPhone 4S on the network. But what's great about this is you do not need to be on the same wireless network. This will also work through Bluetooth. So if you're, uh, uh, for example, if you're using 3G, if you're not in a Wi-Fi network, this will use Bluetooth instead. So it works pretty seamlessly. So we're going to select iPhone 4S. We're going to beam photo. It's preparing the photo to send to me. I have to agree to it. Alright, the transfer is complete and all I have to do is go to my beamed photo gallery and the photo is right there. Now the next feature I'm going to show you is journal which you can start in a number of ways. You can use the share icon to start a journal or you can go to your gallery or albums. So let's go to my photo stream and let's start picking some. So all we have to do is start selecting a few like the method I showed you earlier. There we go. Now we go to the share icon, start journal. Uh, we're going to do selecting, and you can select more than one or select uh, more photos, select all flagged photos, etc. etc. Now, here you have a template you can choose from. We don't have that many here, so we have cotton, border, denim, light, dark, mosaic. You can also enter in a journal name, so let's just say demo. So it's going to create the journal. And we're going to go to show to take a look at it. Now when we're in the journal view, you can see we can go to edit. And so here we can uh, increase the size of an item. We can move them around. Or we can, there we go. Or we can add captions. So here, let's add a caption. You get the idea. Now I've already been working on one of them with some effects. So let's go to that one. This is auto show. Now beyond editing and repositioning these photos, you can see I have these additional elements here. And these are widgets. Uh, so you can add widgets from this drop down menu up here uh, indicated by that plus sign and you have quite a few here you have header text notes page pages uh, food quote memories space maps day and weather but the ones that are most interesting are these last three map day and weather these use the exif data from the photos to generate them so for example if you choose a map it will automatically detect the geolocation of the images. Now that's only available for certain images, not all photos taken have GPS location data. Also day, if you choose a calendar day, you can see it knows what the date of the photo was and will automatically add that. So these photos were taken on January 14th and weather. So if you add a weather widget, uh, you can see it will be able to determine the weather conditions uh, of the time of day, the exact day, and the geolocation. So we'll combine all those elements, time, day, and geolocation for the weather conditions. Unfortunately, none of these photos have all of those elements. So this is great for iPhone photos, that sort of thing. But for photos that were taken with a camera without geolocation, this won't work too well. But you can edit this yourself just by double tapping on them. So of course this is January in Michigan and we had some flurries. It certainly wasn't 70 with flurries, so let's change that. We're gonna do our temperature. We're gonna to scroll to, I don't know, let's say 17, there you go. And of course you can reposition this to anywhere you want. I also have maps here, so you can zoom in on the map right here. So we're gonna zoom in a little closer to Detroit. 
Now once we're done editing our journal, we can just tap the edit key and that will lock into place. And we can go ahead and start sharing this. One of the interesting features here is iCloud sharing. So of course you can play a slideshow or you can share this on the iTunes and sync this to other devices. But let's go to iCloud. And here you can publish this directly to iCloud. So I've already done this already. I've turned that on. And we can go ahead and tell a friend or view in Safari. So let's go ahead and view in Safari. Now initially when you do this for the first time, it will have to upload it to uh, your iCloud. So here we go. This is the Safari view. So this is exactly what you'll see in a web browser. And you can go to journals and see some other examples. So this is the web interface. Interestingly, you can't access this by going to iCloud.com. You can only get direct links to it. So let's go back to iPhoto and show you how to share a direct link. So we can go ahead and tell a friend. So now we're generating an email and we can send an email link. So let's just send it to myself. So I should get an email now along with a bunch of spam. There I am. Go to View Auto Show. And it will launch the web browser and take me to it. So as you can see, even in the web page view, you can tap on the photos to view them in full size. You can tap next to see the next row of items. Or you can click play to play a slideshow. Now taking a quick look at the iPhone version, there is some differences here just in terms of user interface design. Obviously for the smaller form factor, works in both landscape and portrait mode. You can take a look at our galleries uh, on the front page. Of course we have our journals which were beamed from my iPad from that last project. So if we go to my albums, we go to photo stream. We can see the last photo I was working on. Of course you have your gallery here. Whoops, oops, let's go back. You have a gallery here and you can scroll to one column or two columns and of course if you go to portrait mode it repositions that. And if you double tap a picture it looks for all similar pictures or you can tap and hold to add another picture. Of course we have all the same editing tools that the iPad version has except for an undo button. If you want to undo anything you just shake your phone and it brings up that option. Not sure I prefer that over just an undo button but you get the idea. You have a rotation button here that does a quick rotation and you can bring out your tools here. So if you want to do a crop uh, again, you have the same options here. You can pinch the zoom, or you can use this little scale here, or you can use the uh, uh, the uh, accelerometer. Now, to bring up our other tools, we just tap this little suitcase here. brings out the uh, aperture editor. So, again, works the same way. Uh, we have our color wheel, so we can, again, change it just like we would either with touch or with these sliders. We also have our uh, paint brushes, which take a little longer to render, but you get the same sort of user interface here where you can select your paint brushes and you can use it. Uh, the only difference here is every time you want to bring up a different brush, you kind of have to tap them. And of course we have our effects palette, so we can just select our effects. And again, it works exactly the same. So there you go guys, that's iPhoto in iOS. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next video.